We need to talk. Cum ar fi ca într-o zi, din senin, să afli că suferi de două maladii extrem de rare și că mai ai de trăit doar trei luni? Sună bizar, dar astăzi vom afla povestea celui care a trăit această experiență înfricoșătoare. Este vorba de Howard Dell, fost sportiv de performanță, actor american în arhicunoscutul serial Tânăr și neliniștit și care a luat decizia de a se muta definitiv în România. Howard are acum 52 de ani, s-a născut la Toronto, în Canada. Tatălui este jamaican, iar mama irlandeză. Și-a petrecut copilăria în cartierul North York, alături de fratele și surorile sale, în timpul mișcării drepturilor civile, suferind de pe urma discriminărilor pe motive rasiale. Cum a fost copilăria ta? A fost great. Eu am crescut în 60-s și avem multe, știu, în Canada și în America, multe probleme raciale. Deci, știu, a fost greu. Pot să văd că a fost greu pentru mama mea. He didn't want the kids to be affected by that too much. I just remember growing up, he used to say, you have to be twice as good just to be considered equal. Ai avut de suferit din cauza rasismului? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. But um, what do you do? An example? Um, well, I mean, I, I would see my father, um, who was more educated than other teachers, um, and other teachers with lesser education and credentials would get promoted in jobs well past him. And he just, they just kept him, you know, here. And of course, the typical name calling and... Uh... Înainte de a fi actor, uh, știu că ai fost sportiv. Cum te-ai apropiat de sport? With the same veracity, I approached everything in life. Um, sports and life, uh, they, they run parallel courses. Care sunt rezultatele cu care te mândrești în sport? Opening ceremonies of the uh, 88 Olympic Games, signing my first Um, professional football contract with the Cincinnati Bengals in the National Football League. Ten gold medals, one silver medal uh, Where? at the World Transplant Games. Um, I'm a transplant recipient um, and setting eight world records. Dar dificultăți ai avut în sport? And then my last year of high school was finished. It was a great year. I was winning everything. And then I had an accident with my knees. And they, and I was looking forward to going to college, university, to play sport. And they said, no. You'll never play sport again. Um, that was my very. That was my first. That was the first problem I, that I came across. So I had to have major knee surgery, and uh, both I spent, of them. Both of them, yeah. And uh, yeah, I spent the next three and a half years in physiotherapy, trying to get back to where I was. I, I knew I was going to have to work really hard. She sat in the cuvânt. A câștigat o medalie de bronz la campionatul național de decathlon, apoi locul 3 la campionatul mondial de bob și locul 12 la olimpiada de la Calgary din 1988. Nu s-a oprit aici. Fotbalul american îl atregea ca un magnet, așa că la 27 de ani, cu un act falsificat care prevedea că are doar 23, a semnat un contract cu echipa de fotbal din Dallas. Numai că fericirea nu a ținut mult. Echipa a fost vândută în scurt timp și toți jucătorii concediați. Dezamăgit, a plecat la Los Angeles pentru a fi unul dintre cei mulți care vor să devină actori. Ce te-a determinat să devii actor? În the fourth grade, I was, what are you, how, eight years old? I had five goals. I said, I'm going to play professional football, I'm going to play professional basketball, I'm going to the Olympics, I'm going to win an Oscar, and I'm going to win a Grammy. That was my... So, I got three of them done. I have left Oscar and Grammy. Ai făcut cursuri de actorie? I was playing professional football, and I was doing an interview. And the, the interviewer asked me, so, you're doing this acting, um, have you ever had any acting? And I said, acting, how hard can it be? <laughs> 
for the next week, I got hate mail. <laughs> I got mail from people, acting's very difficult, you know, you should, and I was like, sorry. For me, no. Yeah. How did you uh, get the first role? First role? Primi, primo role. Oh, first role was um, <clears throat> on a show called A Different World. Oh, in this particular, in this, it's a comedy show and uh, about kids at a university. And I was one of the guys in the calendar. So they had to audition me to be in the calendar and, and Halle Berry, um, that was her first, um, her first gig, I believe. So we, we started together in the same show. I, I, I'd see her and I'd be like, <laughs> she was so beautiful, you could, I couldn't even talk to her. Tânără și frumoasă, nu tânăr și neliniștit. Mulți te cunosc din serialul Tânăr și neliniștit, arhi cunoscut în, și în România. Cum ai reușit să obții acest rol? Detective Troy Hawkins. <laughs> Detective. Detective. Detective Hawkins, Genoa City Police Department. You're under arrest for the murder of Lauren Fenmore. Again, that was uh, an audition process. I actually uh, uh, was over four years. So I started with a small role, one or two lines, you know, a policeman. And then they thought, they, they went, oh, he's good. We'll make him uh, Officer Cole, right? So then I was a police officer with a few more lines. And then time went on, they went, we like you. And then we're going to make you a detective. <laughs> so in my last 18 months of the show, I was detective. And uh, it, was, it was so much fun. Ce însemna pentru cariera ta acest rol? I mean, obviously a good thing, but to that point in time, it wasn't my biggest role. I did a series with a, a gentleman named John Wu. And John Wu was a director who did Mission Impossible, Broken Arrow, Face Off, you know, worked with uh, Travolta and, and those guys and Tom Cruise. So I did a series with him, 28 episodes, which is great. Um, so you're, you're in the acting world, you're always trying to climb the ladder, you know, from one role, hopefully to a better role, to a better role. So Young and the Restless was along the way. Unfortunately for me, it was my last role before, uh, um, you know, I got sick. Were you a fan of uh, oh, young, my, oh, young oh, and Restless? Like, I, oh. Was fun? No. When I was in college, when I was in college, Young and the Restless comes on two times a day, at noon, and at four, the entire university stops. For at, this? For Young and the Restless. Oh yeah, you'd be like, because you're following the storyline. It was, it was great. So here I am, 20 years later, on Young and the Restless, with the same people I worshipped when I was in school. Come here, college de plateau. The funniest thing was, you're working with them for the, all those years, so they have real names, right? And for the life of me, I could never call them by the real name. Like, I would see, you know, Laura Lee Bell is Cricket. I'd be like, hey, Cricket, let, I'm sorry, you know. After so many after years. After so many years. I mean, I watched it all my life, right? Victor's Victor, you know. Catherine Chancellor's Catherine. I mean, everybody is their name. I could never call them by their name. So they used to laugh at me. They'd just be like, eh, oh, Howard. <laughs> to make a long story short, I get a call from the doctor. The phone rings, and it, I see the doctor's office. I'm like, oh, secretary, nurse, you know. Hello, it's the doctor. And he's like, do you have a minute? I'm like, okay, that can't be good. So we're talking for 23 minutes and he, and during the course of the, I don't even remember what he said, but during the conversation he said, do you have your affairs in order? I'm like, what do you mean are my affairs in order? And he's like, do you have a will? Do you have a, you know, have you prepared, do you have any preparation for not being here? An insurance? And I'm like, I, no, and he said, and, and then that's when he told me, he said, do you have uh, a very rare liver disease? Um, you have what we call uh, primary sclerosing cholangitis at this point. Um, you've got three, maybe six months to live. Diagnosticul primit a fost ca o condamnare la moarte. Colangita sclerozantă este o inflamație cronică, progresivă a ficatului, pentru care nu există tratament. Finalul este în majoritatea cazurilor unul tragic. Singura speranță este transplantul de ficat. Tu te simțeai bolnav, te așteptai la un asemenea diagnostic? No, I mean I didn't feel, you know, I had a little problem uh, um, with, uh, with my colon, little, little, little uh, inflammation and just small stuff for a man 45 at that time, you know, nothing crazy. I was pretty healthy. Cum ai primit vestea asta? It's like hey, there's a process you go through, right? Everything that you were, everything that you are and everything that you're going to be is no more? I mean, that, that, I don't, I can't comprehend that. So you go through this process and uh, you have to mourn yourself.
first and you have to decide what will I do. Howard a decis să trăiască. S-a încăpățânat să trăiască. A vândut tot și a plecat în lume să caute vindecare pentru boala lui. A încercat și medicina alternativă. A ajuns într-o farmacie naturistă din China care părea a fi din vremuri îndepărtate și de acolo a primit un tratament. Nu se știe dacă acesta a avut vreun efect. Cert este că de la aflarea veștii trecuseră deja 2 ani și 9 luni și el era încă în viață. Liver disease is brutal. Um, and I can show you photos. I mean, um, you begin to get something called ascites. Your eyes go yellow. You, you get pale in the face. You get a little more fragile. Um, you get weaker. You, you're, you're very toxic. Your blood can't be cleaned because your liver doesn't work. Care e primul lucru pe care l-ai făcut? Once I discovered it, um, once I was told, I just went home and cried. What are you going? What else are you going to do? You sit there and, like someone just told you, it's the end. And it's not somebody, it's a doctor, it's a specialist. So you go home and cry, and then you think, okay, he's wrong. Second opinion, third opinion, and by the way, each opinion got worse. Each opinion was, each opinion was worse than the one before it. Ai încercat să cauți un tratament? They have no treatment, no drugs, no nothing. You get it and die, or you have to have a transplant. Of course, a transplant is, uh, Getting a transplant in America is like winning the lottery. Your chance, you have a better chance to win the lottery than you have getting a transplant. Why? Um, there's just not a lot of organs available. There's, there are lists. There's, there's thousands of people dying ahead of you. I mean, you know, who decides? How, who decides who gets a transplant? How am I going to get one? I need to find another way. So um, I sold everything I had, borrowed as much money as you can, and somewhere in the world there's an answer. Some clinic. It might be in China, it might be in Switzerland, it might be in Australia, it might be in New Zealand, somewhere. Some guru, homeopathic, naturopathic, um, holistic doctor, got some roots and some herbs and maybe it'll cure you. So I set out to find it. By the time the fourth opinion came, I didn't have just one disease, I had two both very rare, um, PSC and one called Wilson's disease. So I traveled the world trying to, uh, trying to stay alive. You have no choice. What are you going to do? You either have to find a way or you have to sit at home and wait to die. And I'm not going out on my knees. I'm standing up fighting it. If I, had I not done sports, I, I couldn't have made it through the transplant. I wouldn't have made it. How did you save your life? I don't know. He, you know, God. Uh, somebody's, you know, somebody's looking out. Um, I just, uh, I just got very proactive. On the other side of things, my friends were like, okay, you need to get on a transplant list and go through the process. I know it takes time, it's not immediate. You might not get on the list, but at least you should try that too. And I went that route, thanks to my friends, right? And then when it came to the point where, um, I, just, I just did everything I was supposed to do with the hospital. But in the meantime, I was doing my own thing too. And when it came time, uh, instead of dying three to six months, I lasted two years and nine months, but I literally came to my last days. Um, and one day, I was just not feeling well. Um, I drove myself to the hospital, November 3rd, and from my car, my car is parked here, 30 meters right there is the door to the hospital. It took me 35 minutes to get there, walking. And uh, halfway there, I sat down on the road. And I just, I just sat, sat on the curb like this. The door for the hospital is like right there. I, just, I can't make it. And uh, this old man, and when I say old, I mean old. You know when you look at somebody, you're like, he's old. He, old man comes out and he says, are you okay? And I'm saying, I'm good, I'm good. I'm just, I'm just stopping for a rest. I'm just coming, going into emergency. And, he, and I put my head down. I don't know how long I was sitting there, but when I looked up again, he was back with a wheelchair. This old guy was back with a wheelchair. Probably one of the last things I remember, except waking up uh, November 17th with a new liver. After. After is hell. <laughs> oh, what? Oh. The post-transplant process is very difficult. You're, you have to have 24-hour day care for eight weeks. This is how it is in the US. Two months. 24 hours a day care. 
All I wanted to do the first month after my transplant was die. <laughs> The pain was so bad. It was just hurt so bad. Um, as you see me now, I'm 96 kilos. In the picture that I show you, I'm 63 kilos. I'm taking 23, 24 medications every day, four times a day, plus two injections. Um, because my liver failed, my kidneys got damaged. So now for eight, for eight weeks, I have to go and do dialysis as well because they think maybe my kidneys have to come out. Now I need a kidney transplant too. So it's like, so for the first six weeks after transplant, things are very shaky. They don't know, they can anticipate, they can sort of say, you, you got a pretty good chance of making it, or I don't know, we'll see. That's all you hear, we'll see. So you make it past six weeks, things look better. You make it past six months, things look really good. Um, yeah. My, uh, my brother-in-law, um, yeah, even, even now when I see him, I could get, you know, I have a hard time seeing him now because for six weeks he's slept on a couch beside me. Near looking you. At, yeah, look, this, him and my sister, um, they sort of would trade off. But he had this first six weeks and my sister would come in and he'd go and watch the kids. And, uh, and then I had uh, three very good friends, I had Donna and Wendy and Christy, um, Peggy, um, and they just, they brought me food, they looked after me, they took me to dialysis, yeah. I mean, I had great care. No, I wasn't sure that I got married. No, never, never married. Not, uh, no kids. Not for lack of trying. Uh, I was engaged once, and she ran away with another man. Uh, I asked one woman to marry me from another country, and I was in Australia, and fell in love with a girl there. I asked her to marry me. She said no. And then uh, I had one love of my life uh, uh, who passed away. So. What? Yeah, she she uh, died in a car accident, um, and we we were uh, yeah, uh, love of my life. Um, what are you gonna do? Yeah, you know, was not a was not a good, and it's subsequently she dies in 2001 or two, and four years later, I have this liver problem. Somehow I think they say the liver is the emotional organ of the body. I don't know. I I, I often think about that. I was so emo I mean, when, when I found out that she had passed away, never been so emotionally damaged in my life ever. You loved her very much. Yeah, huh? I always just. I was just crushed. I was just crushed. I, and then four years later, the doctor tells me I'm going to die. Hmm. I always wonder about that. You know, I should write about that in my book. What that connection, that emotional connection, is to. You know, maybe maybe my liver was heartbroken and just sort of went. Ugh, no sense going on. Sunt șapte ani de la transplant, de când Howard a renăscut făcând-o în stilul propriu. La șase luni de la operație participă la o competiție sportivă destinată celor care au suferit transplanturi, unde a câștigat la atletism, stabilind un nou record. De atunci, aleargă de pe un continent pe altul, trăind totul intens pentru a recupera timpul pierdut. I run as fast as I, as fast as I did in high school. So when I was... 18, 19 years old, I run that fast now, at 52. So um, I'm, in, I'm in great shape and, uh, you know, I've had to start over. Um, I'm four years post-transplant, so I went bankrupt. I mean, I lost everything trying to pay for it, and then I went bankrupt. So I'm starting at zero again, but I'm alive, I'm well. Când ai venit pentru prima dată aici, în România? My first visit to Romania was 2003, because I was the, uh, I was the trainer um, for Raluca Sandu who's one of my best friends. And, uh, and then uh, through her I met other, kept acquiring friends and it was great. I mean, Romania's been really great to me and the, the Tyriac family's been very great to me too, so. Yeah, I, don't, I just sort of fell in love with the place the first time I was here. Acum locuiești aici? Yes, yeah, of course. I'm, in Romania, I'm, I'm doing film. So, as I mentioned before, I was here three weeks and I was starring a Steven Seagal film. And then on top of that, I'm a, I'm a cardiac care specialist. Um, and there is a treatment for heart disease um, and also health and wellness that they don't have here in Bucharest or in Romania. And just to tell you, just to give you an example, this treatment is so phenomenal. Not having it here in Romania is, is like saying to me that Romania doesn't have antibiotics. It is, uh, it is probably the single best treatment for anything to do with heart disease. And so I brought, I brought my equipment and the machines here and I'm going to be offering the treatment um, to people here as well. Cât timp planuiesc să stai în Romania? Um, huh, you know. Never say never. Okay, thank you for your confession. Mulțumesc pentru confesiunea ta. I have a surprise for you about music. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, you have time? I have all the time in the world. For me. For, for you especially. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. Okay, um, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> this is the place. You have truly outdone yourself on this one, Julian. Oh my god. I uh, heard you have this wish. Um, fabulous. To play here. Yeah, yeah. I'll, uh, okay, you got me nervous now. I'm a, oh? little, I'm, a little, I'm a little nervous, you know. One day in September, my friends called me to say. Something bad had happened and that you had passed away Never did I imagine that I'd never say goodbye A heart of gold and a beautiful soul Now all I can do is cry, is cry I'm gonna miss you now you've gone I'm gonna miss you but I'll try to carry on Howard nu a realizat întotdeauna ce și-a propus și a luat-o de multe ori de la capăt, însă a câștigat cea mai importantă luptă, lupta cu moartea. Acum fostul actor din tânăr și neliniștit își continuă destinul aici, pe plaiuri mioritice și se pare că viața îi surâde din nou.